To install a connector on a studio reformer with metal risers, you need a power drill, a Phillips screwdriver, a combination wrench, a drill bit, an Allen wrench, a socket with a ratchet is helpful, and you need a pencil. If you have metal shoulder rest posts, you will also need a rag and a pair of vice grips. Hi, my name is Kayleen and I'm here in the BB Garage to show you how to put a connector on a studio reformer with metal risers. So sometimes you might, might have metal risers with a tower or without, but either way we're looking at machines that have these metal risers. In this video there are two carriage configurations. The first one that we're going to talk about are these um, shoulder rests with the twist lock posts. The second configuration is a carriage with metal posts. So you may need to skip ahead depending on which kind of carriage shoulder rests you have. All right, so we're gonna talk about how to install the connector and then we'll uh, cover a couple of tips to get you started using the connector. Um, so our first step in assembling is actually taking the ropes and the loops off the reformer and putting them off to the side. I would save these ropes just in case you ever want to convert back. Um, now let's get your shoulder rests changed. Okay. So with the twist lock shoulder rests, we're simply going to untwist the posts all the way so that this black post comes off like this. Then we'll remove the shoulder rest. Okay. Before we put the new posts on, we have to change out two bolts on our carriage shoulder rest brackets. I'm going to remove two bolts, one on each side of the headrest. So the one I'm going to remove is the one there's um, the single one, this bolt and this bolt here, okay? So let's take your Allen wrench and lefty-loosey to unscrew the bolt. Okay. You can see the one we're taking out is actually a lot shorter than the one we're going to put in. And I'll take the longer bolt and thread it back in. Let's repeat on the other side. Now I'm going to grab our new black shoulder rest posts so we can install them. Our new posts have little hats on top and this is so that when you install the um, when you're not using any set of loops, they go on the posts and they don't slide off the top. So I just did righty tighty and I've tightened down the knob so the shoulder rest does not rattle anymore. Okay, 
So now our shoulder rests are all set. If your studio reformer with metal risers has shoulder rests that look like these with metal posts, I'm going to show you um, the slightly different way to get the carriage ready for the connector. So the first thing we want to do is to remove these lanyards from your reformer because you won't need them anymore. So I'm going to take my Phillips screwdriver and unscrew the screw that is holding in the end of the lanyard. Remove the lanyard and then put that screw right back in. I'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay, we need to remove these metal posts and swap them for posts with metal flanges. So I'm actually going to take this off to do this. Now the best way to do this, because some of these are pretty stuck on here, is to use a pair of vice grips and a rag. So I'm going to use the rag on the post to protect the post metal from the, these abrasive teeth. And I'm going to grip the post near the base. Okay, the reason I do that um, is because sometimes these are really hard to, to untwist. And so if you're closer to the base, you're going to have a um, better grip. Okay. So let's see, let's get these vice grips adjusted. Okay, now I've, got, I've secured the vice grips. I'm just going to go lefty loosey to loosen, and then I can go the rest of the way with my hand. Okay, now I'm ready to put on my new post, which is hiding in the box. One second. All right. So our posts look like this with a little hat. And I'm just going to go righty tighty to twist them back on to the post. I'll tighten them by hand. I'll give them a good snug twist. Um, but we don't need to use the vice grips to tighten them back on. Now I'll do the same thing with the other side. These shoulder rests can go back on. Okay. And then once we flip this carriage over, we'll actually put a bolt through the hole where your quick release pins were. All right, let's flip the carriage over. Now, before we move on, I do want to mention that if you are assembling the connector with these metal posts, uh, you will have some extra hardware, okay? So this extra hardware is two bolts and two spacers. And this is just in case that when you're removing your original posts, um, in case something breaks, you've got the extra hardware. So if that does happen, 
call Balanced Body Tech Support and they will walk you through how to use this. Otherwise, don't worry about it. All right, let's move on to the head end of the reformer. We're ready to take the reform, uh, sorry, take the carriage and flip it over so that we can install the hardware underneath the carriage. This is often a good place for two people. Um, it is possible to do it with one, as you'll see, um, but the carriage is pretty heavy. When I flip it over, I'm going to make sure that it rests across the top of the frame on upholstery on both sides so that none of the hard edges scrape or um, mar your wood frame, okay? All right, so we're gonna be working up here to assemble the undercarriage assembly. The first step in assembling our hardware underneath the carriage is to install the hair guard. So in our box, we're gonna find three parts, okay? So we should have two pieces that look like that. Let me find the other one. And a plastic piece that fits across the two that looks like this, okay? And so we're actually going to screw this hair guard on using a four screws. So in that little bag of hardware we had earlier, we're gonna find the four tiny screws. These are the smallest screws in your package. And they look like that. Okay. Where's the other one? Here it is. Now, I'm going to fully tighten the screws on the side that have a hole. And when you start these screws, be gentle. We don't need to force it. Sometimes they're a little bit tricky to find the threads. So just have some patience here. And you should be able to start them all with your hands. Now on this side with the holes, I'm gonna take my Allen wrench, once again from the bag, and I'm going to fully tighten these bolts. Okay. Now the side that has the slots we will finger tighten them, and then later we'll come back and tighten them once the width has been um, properly adjusted. Okay, so I'm gonna put them in by hand. So you can see here that they still slide back and forth, okay? All right, so now we've got our hair guard assembled to the brackets. We're going to install the brackets to the carriage um, to the carriage base. So we wanna make sure that the pulleys are facing the correct orientation, and that is towards the risers. And it can get kind of confusing when the carriage is upside down and sideways. But um, so we're gonna take our frame of reference to um, just the carriage. And I want the pulleys to face the um, spreader bar or the headrest, okay? So I'm gonna flip this around. And then I'm going to slide it over the bolts here. So you should be able to see that the bolt we just installed before flipping the carriage over sticks up through the bracket, okay? And that should happen on both sides, okay? Now from here, we're gonna go back to our hardware and find a, a washer and a nylock nut, okay? So I will show you what those two look like. Here's our washer and our nylock nut. We need one for each side. Here's the other side. Okay. So to secure the bracket, we're gonna put the washer on, the bolt that's sticking up, and then the nut. 
And for this one, it's really helpful to have a socket with a 7 sixteenths, um, a 7 sixteenths socket with a ratchet handle. Okay. So I'm going to tighten that down. Now I'm not going to tighten it all the way down yet because we have another bolt to assemble here. Okay, so I actually just tightened it a little bit too much. Okay, and I'll do the same thing to the other side. Then the last piece of hardware that we need to secure the brackets for um, are included in here. So we can put our Allen wrench aside. We're going to need two big washers and two regular hex nuts and these two bolts. So here's the hardware we need pictured right here. Okay. We're going to take these and make a little assembly. So first you slide the washer on and then we're going to slide the hex nut all the way on so it holds the washer in place. Okay, Just like that. So now we've made that little assembly. Okay, I'll do the same thing for the other side. Okay. So these are actually going to go through the top side of the carriage and stick out just like our other bolts that we've already put nuts on. So now we can take the final two nylock nuts and washers. Okay, This assembly we just made is going to go through the rope hole. The rope hole is that hole that we sometimes stick the rope through after it goes through the eye straps and the cam cleats. So I'm going to take this bolt and put it in from the top side. Now this would be the top side if the carriage was right side up in the frame, but in this case the carriage is upside down. So I'm going to stick it through and now we can see that the bolt sticks through not only the frame but also the bracket. Okay. Now from here I'm going to take my other washer, slide the washer over, and then take my nylock nut and I'm going to tighten well, I'll start the nut with my fingers. Okay. So now at this point I'm going to need two tools to tighten this all the way. I need the Allen wrench that came with the kit and that is going to fit on the head of the bolt that is underneath and that's going to hold everything in place. Then I'm going to take my socket okay. And that's what I'll use to tighten this bolt. Okay. So I'm having a hard time here because I've used the long end of the Allen wrench. I'm just going to quickly switch so that I have more leverage by using the short end of the Allen wrench. All right, that should be better. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down most of the way. And then when I get close, let me get a little closer. When I get close, I'm going to make sure that this bracket is pressed flush up against this wooden um, piece here so that it's not sitting back like this. Okay. I'm going to press it all the way up there and tighten the bolt to make sure it stays in that position. Okay. There we go. Sometimes it's nice to have a second person here. Okay. Sometimes that helps. What's going on? Oh, oh, my other side got a little jammed up here. One second. There we go. So the other side has to be flush as well. There we go. Okay. 
Here we go. Let's try that again. And it's still flush up against that wood piece. Now it's tight. So now I can go ahead um, and do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to take that bolt assembly, put it through the other rope hole so it sticks through the carriage and through the bracket. And I'll take, again, the washer and the nylock nut, start the nylock nut, take the short end of the Allen wrench and find the head of the bolt and your socket wrench. Okay. And we're going to tighten this down almost all the way and then make this bracket flush. Okay, we're going to press it all the way up against the wooden beam. Okay. There we go. And that is how we're going to tighten this down. Okay. might be nice for two people to do here. So maybe I can get someone to help me hold the bracket flush up against the beam. Thank you. And here I can tighten. Two people. Super handy. Oh crap. I lost the head of the bolt again. There we go. All right, so I've tightened that down. It's all there. So we've secured both brackets, but we have some other bolts to tighten. So I'm going to tighten the other nylock nuts that are sticking up, and I don't need my Allen wrench for this. I just need my 7 16 socket. I'm going to give that a little tighten. Okay, do the same thing on the other side. It doesn't have to be super tight, but you do want to make sure that the nylock O-ring is engaging the threads of the bolt here. Okay, So you can see we've already tightened these two bolts that hold the hair guard to the bracket because those were on the holes. So on the other side, we need to finish tightening down these bolts. And you can tell these ones are not, they're not all the way flush with the plastic, but they're also in the side that has the slots. Okay, and the reason we don't tighten these down is that this way the, the, um, the width of the brackets can be a little bit flexible as we install it. But now that they're installed, we're going to go ahead and tighten down the bolts that hold the hair guard to the bracket. Okay, so now our undercarriage hardware is all installed and we're ready to flip the carriage back over and put it back in the frame. Now that we've got our carriage hardware installed, let's flip the carriage over and move on up. just going to attach one spring to keep it in place. Okay, let's go over to the head end of the reformer. To mount the lower pulleys on your reformer frame, we need to drill two holes. One's going to go right in this area over here, and the other one will go right over here. So on the back side, we're going to use the tower bracket as a reference. And you should have a template that comes with your kit. Now, if you have a tower bracket, you're going to line the template up against this curvature here. Um, and if you don't, you're going to line up the bottom edges with the corner of the leg and the frame there. So I'm just going to take my pencil and mark a circle on that side. And we can take your template and flip it over and repeat on the other side. So now I've got two very clear 
marks where I'm going to drill. So I've got my drill all set up with the drill bit that came with the kit. Um, and a couple tips here. So first, make sure that you're drilling in level and you're applying enough pressure into the wood to actually cut into the wood. The second thing is once you come through the other side, you want to be going at a very steady pace with a little bit gentle pressure so that we don't blow out and create um, splinters on the inside of the frame. Okay. All right, so here we go. Pretty good. All right, now we've got two holes and we're going to assemble this pulley assembly, one through each hole. Before I do that, I need to remove an acorn nut, a hex nut, and two washers. One, two. That leaves one flat washer and one finish washer on the eye bolt. Now I can take this assembly and put it through the hole on the inside of the frame, just like that, okay? And then from here, I'm going to reinstall two washers and the hex nut. I'm finger tightening the hex nut, but to fully tighten this, I need a screwdriver, doesn't matter what kind, and a wrench, okay, a combination wrench. So I'm going to use the screwdriver to hold the eye bolt still and then tighten the nut on the back. And I'm going snug but not super tight. You might start to see this washer eat into the wood if you go too tight. So we want to avoid going too tight, but this is secure here. Okay, and then we'll finish with the A cord nut. Okay, so that's on, and I'm just gonna give this a nice little snug, whoops. Don't forget to hold the back with a screwdriver. There we go. Okay, now let's repeat this process on the other side. Now that we've got our lower pulleys mounted, we can move on to installing the new riser posts. 
It's time to swap out your risers. It's really easy with these metal risers. We're simply going to remove the pin, pull your old riser out. We'll put them off to the side, save them for later maybe. And then take your new set of risers and put it into the receiver. All right. Now I can do the same thing with the other riser. Okay, we're ready to thread the ropes now. So I'm gonna grab my rope, and this is just, I'm gonna take one end here of the rope and then let everything else fall to the floor. And then I start by threading this end of the rope under the carriage through both pulleys. And then I'll end up with two ends coming out of the carriage like this, okay? So I'm gonna do this riser first. We're gonna take this end, thread it through the bottom pulley and come up through the middle, the pulley closest to the middle here. I come back towards the carriage, and this is where I loop one of these black loops with a pulley on it. So I'm gonna put this rope through the pulley on the loop, and then place the loop over the shoulder rest, okay? Got a little tangled rope under here. Now I'm gonna come back towards the riser, go through the outer pulley, and then I come back towards the carriage. And just for now, I'm just gonna loop that end of the rope over the shoulder post, okay? So we're gonna repeat the same thing on the other side. Whew, after I untangle this rope. So I've gotta find the loose end here. Here we go. So coming from the carriage, I go towards this bottom riser. Now notice I'm trying to keep this lanyard out of the way. Okay, I don't really wanna go through the lanyard. I go up to the middle pulley, back towards the carriage where I find one of the loops with a pulley on it. And I thread the rope through that pulley my rope now comes back to the risers and I go through the remaining outer pulley, okay? And I can pull the rope towards the carriage now. So we've got two loose ends of the rope. I'm going to attach the second set of, of loops to them. So these are the gray loops. And we're gonna use a soft touch connection. So that means this end of the rope goes through the metal D-ring. And then the other end of the loop goes through the rope here, okay? And I'm gonna slide it all the way down and pull it tight down here, okay? And then this loop can just rest on the post. I'll do the same thing on the other side. Rope goes through the metal D-ring and then over the other end of the loop It slides down and we pull it tight on the D-ring. Okay, so now we've got our um, connector all set up and ready to use. Before we sign off, I wanna make sure that you've got a few tips to get started using the connector. The first one I want to mention is that when you use only one set of straps, okay, so if I'm only using the gray straps, Make sure that some part of the black strap, whether it's the short loop or the long loop, is attached to the shoulder post, okay? The reason this is is so that um, they don't fall on the floor. They have tension in the system, and then these little hats on the posts prevent the straps from sliding off the top. The second thing I wanna mention is that the colors of these straps are important, okay? So the gray straps, if you use them alone, are typically about half um, what you would expect. So if you had a 
red spring or two red springs, let's say two red springs attached and we're using these gray straps, it might feel like a regular reformer exercise using only one red spring. Now, an easy way to fix that is to use your gray, uh, sorry, your black straps. The black straps are basically the equivalent weight of what you're used to. Now you may notice that they've got these stripes on here and they're very pronounced on the gray ones because they're a different color. And this is um, part of the tri-loop. So the tri-loop is really great because it folds down really easily to create a support for your heel or for your wrist. So that's really nice so you can do plantar flexion and dorsiflexion at any point of feet and straps, for example. Um, and then when you don't need them, you just fold it back on top of the loop and it gets out of the way. Oops, just like that, okay? The gray straps also have this little Velcro piece here and that just makes it a little bit easier um, to keep this big strap on a smaller foot. Now, the final thing I wanna mention is that if you want to remove the reciprocal motion of the straps, all you need to do is pull this rope, okay? I'm gonna pull the rope up from underneath here and send it through the eye strap and then through the cam cleats. And I'm gonna put one part of the rope through the cam cleats and the other goes right around. And then when you pull on this rope, it should be snug. Now, if you do this the other way and you pull, the rope might move. Okay, so that means you just need to lift this up and switch it to the other side like that. Give it a tug. Just make sure we've got the straps on. Do that for both sides and you're good to go. That completes our tutorial on the connector. I will see you next time. If you need more videos like this one, you can head over to pilates.com slash bbgarage.